Hello and welcome everyone to Women's Health Tech Wednesdays. I am your host, Nina Joshi. have a couple of quick announcements before we bring on today's guest. We have our December sum uh, summit coming up at the end of the year. Make sure that you grab your tickets for that QR code and the link will be in the chat. And we also have our Women's Health Tech Challenge applications open. The deadline is September 3rd, so make sure that you get your application sent over. It's going to be a really awesome event. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. And with that, we'd like to formally bring on one of HitLab's own, Dr. Kat Marriott, who is a senior research scientist over at HitLab. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> Love it. Well, I know we have, you know, so much to talk about, so much that I want to get your insights on when it comes to your research and some of the findings that you have. Uh, but before we jump into all of that, you know, fun details for folks that maybe are meeting you for the first time here at Women's Health Tech Wednesdays, do you mind giving us a super quick, you know, background or introduction to yourself and your journey that has led you to HitLab? Sure, absolutely. So um, I uh, I came to HitLab, I've been here a little over four years, and um, as the senior research manager at, um, at HitLab, I oversee the research projects where we are actively validating um, and conducting trials on the various products that HitLab supports, whether they come from the Women's Health Tech Challenge or the BTA Challenge, the Breakthrough Alliance Challenge, or, or they are um, if you will, uh, uh, contracted customers of mm -hmm. HitLab. And what we do at, um, at HitLab is we conduct research studies in order to test, you know, the validity, the, the um, accuracy, um, the uh, pretty much we can, we can do a lot of different types of trials, the usability of mm -hmm. the products. But I came to I came to Hit Lab from a background in uh, pathology and infectious disease work, and I spent um, several years conducting uh, research, both preclinical and clinical research, looking at um, pharmaceuticals and vaccine development. And um, I, my, my research background is pretty varied. I've, I've done research, everything from bench research, you know, in vitro work to in vivo work to human clinical trials. So um, yeah, I've found, a, found an interesting little niche here at HitLab. I love that. That's incredible. And I think kind of that's a great jumping off point because like you mentioned, there's so many different you know, types and flavors of the research that you're doing, kind of answering, you know, all sorts of questions from the efficacy to the usability. Um, I know that you kind of recently completed a research study. Uh, would love if you could kind of share or summarize some of the key findings that you've uncovered from your most recent, your recent, ooh, that's like a tongue twister, your most <laughs> recent research study. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we we've done we we've done a lot of I'm going to say small projects mm -hmm. at HitLab recently, but um, one of the most recent ones that we have done um, that I would say is like a, a full fledged um, clinical trial is uh, working with a company that is developing an app for postpartum depression treating and working with women with postpartum depression. And it's been a series of studies. And um, we've basically, we're, we're developing, or the, the company developing this app is, it's really on the cutting edge of being able to not only identify women with, with postpartum depression, but treat them and um, give, them, give them guidance um, especially when their the access to uh, clinicians that that readily treat uh, postpartum depression can be difficult, especially if you're if you're a, a new mother and um, you know you have a choice between staying at home with your child that is perhaps you know not well versus taking the day off to to go you know somewhere in order to to see a clinician a psychiatrist or a therapist or whatnot a lot of times you know women will choose you know taking care of their child 
And with this app, they don't have to go anywhere. They can do this um, uh, CBT-based treatment in the comfort of their home, in the middle of the night, in the early morning, while the baby is napping, while they're waiting for their appointment of, at the pediatrician. It doesn't matter. And so, uh, you know, this concept of uh, meeting patients where they are is something that um, especially um, digital health is, I feel like is, is, you know, such a plus. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think you brought up such an interesting point around the accessibility of how a lot of postpartum moms will kind of prioritize everyone else, kind of their family, their new baby over themselves when it comes to their health care. Um, I thought it really, you just, that just, what a use case, I think, for, for digital health, like you outlined. Um, I think for you, was there anything kind of in specific that really motivated you to pursue kind of this particular area of research? So um, I have always been a, uh, a huge advocate and a huge, um, if you will, fighter for mm -hmm. uh, women's, women's health issues. Um, it's, it's been a, I would say, like a personal passion of mine for, for quite some time. And I continue to do, you know, a lot of um, volunteer, volunteer and advocacy work even outside of my, you know, day job, if you will. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, being able to come to Hit Lab and work with these companies that are really, um, really making important steps in order to addressing women's healthcare needs, and especially those needs the needs that have been somewhat overlooked yeah. or, um, you know, given lesser consideration because there, and some people would say, you know, in the pharmaceutical world or whatever, there's no money to be made in, you know, in some of these healthcare issues. So why invest in that and whatnot? But um, definitely being able to work with these companies has been has been very rewarding for me personally, as well as professionally. Um, I'm still also passionate about um, diseases in general. I am a pathologist by training, um, but there are, there's so many things and, you know, being a woman myself, I, you know, I've personally experienced a lot of the issues that I get to work on and get to work, you know, with companies ad addressing uh, one of the most recent ones, believe it or not, has been menopause. And mm. I've, I've worked with some companies recently on some, you know, amazing concepts and amazing um, healthcare uh, solutions for women with menopause. It's been an eye opener for me personally. <laughs> that, uh, wow, I can only, okay, I'm going to have to remind myself to ask you more questions about that because I'm also very curious. Um, but I, I think you, like, I wholeheartedly um I'm I'm inspired by what you're talking about Dr. Cadden and really speaking to just this ever pressing need to kind of not only invest money and resources but also time and energy into solving these problems for women um and I think kind of the the use case that you just outlined with postpartum depression I think you know speaks to one of so so many where there is so much opportunity to learn um, and kind of brings me to my next question, because as you were talking about what you were kind of working on with this um, digital health tool, I was just so curious in your research, was there any, you know, discovery or chat? Like, was there anything that you uncovered, anything new, anything unexpected um, that you kind of uncovered during this research? Well, I, every single project that I complete at Hit Lab, I learn something new every <laughs> single project and um sometimes it's something like you know really big and like oh my lord how did i not you know how did i not know this before or this is this is great and sometimes it's it's something uh something small mm -hmm. i think with um with the the projects working on the um, postpartum depression solutions one of the biggest things that i learned was really about the 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 realities of the prevalence of postpartum mm -hmm. depression. It's always been something that I've that I've always known has been, you know, a significant issue for women, but really really understanding how um how prevalent it is that 
that, you know, you know, one out of five women, uh, you know, new mothers experience some level of anxiety or depression. And, um, you know, that so many women even, you know, even more go untreated. And one of the one of the worst things that I learned was the fact that, you know, only 30% of new women of, or new mothers even get screened for po postpartum depression, wow. which seems crazy to me. Um, as a, I want to say a side note, we've also worked with a, a different company on a different solution mm -hmm. to, uh, to better identify and actually get the screening to, totally. to these women. So, um, there's, there's a lot of things that are kind of like piece together in order to create a full and complete solution when it comes to a particular healthcare issue in the case of postpartum depression, it can, there's, there could be many little pieces that can fit together in order to to assist women, um, and uh, yeah, the the you know the prevalence and really the you know the the actual statistics um, that can be a bit a bit daunting or depressing, but also you know eye opening, and you realize how important it is the work that we do and how many women it can really touch. Wow. I, the part that you were saying around just even the di the diagnosis and identification aspect, I was not expecting that. That's insane. Did you have any problems or challenges when it came to just recruiting women or um, because your solution was so digital health focused, they were probably chomping at the bits for it too? Yeah, no, for, for that particular, for that particular study, um, we did not have any problem finding the women to participate. Um, they're, they're everywhere. Um, yeah. You know, we, uh, on, for that particular project, you know, we had to make sure that the, the women that were participating um, fulfilled certain criteria. So we, we had to kind of um, focus it down and make sure that our, the, the, um, the subjects all, you know, met that criteria but just identifying the women who were interested and willing to participate. No, no, there was, we didn't have a lot of, a lot of issues with that. And, um, you know, we got a lot of really good feedback from the women after, after the study saying, you know, you know, how, how it really helped them and how they're hoping to, you know, to have access to, to this solution, you know, uh, outside of of a research study because you know a lot of the a lot of the projects and a lot of the products that we work on they're not currently or readily available to the public yet mm -hmm. because they're still in some form of, of development right. um or they're it's very limited um based upon you know the scope of of what that that company you know where they are in in their development cycle um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of the women were really excited to be able to have access to, to the, you know, the app once it was, once it's fully available. 100%. And I could only imagine too, as you're kind of working on, on this app and, and many others, I would imagine kind of if within the women's health space, you know, really being able to, to show like measurable impact when it comes to health outcomes. Is that something mm -hmm that you all are kind of actively tracking and looking for? Because I would imagine there's probably like amazing implications when it comes to improved health outcomes. Yeah, we try to do, especially with the um, the, prod the larger scale projects and, and the companies that we work clo closely with, we try to do a full case study um, with those companies and not only identify the benefits of um, what HitLab provided to the company, but mm -hmm. what are the what are the implications? What are the impacts to the actual, um, you know, the the users, uh, whether they be whether they be women or children or the elderly or whatever? We try to collect as much data as we can on, um, you know not just the impact of that particular study that we have completed, but what are the broader impacts to the users and, uh, you know, the patients, the clinicians, uh, whatnot. Um, it's, it's something that 
not only helps us identify, um, you know, when, when we've done a really good job, but also helps other companies to see what are the full benefits of conducting research and not only just conducting a couple of studies, but doing a complete array of research on their product, what can it bring to them? Um, one of the things that I didn't even realize before coming to Hit Lab was how few of the products that are out there on the market are actually fully tested. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we assume um, that, you know, let's say, for instance, it's similar to a pharmaceutical or even um, food that we might consume, yeah. that it's safe yeah. and it's, you know, it does what it's supposed to do or um, it is it is accurate. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of the the products that are out there on the market, they have not done a complete array of testing. So they can't claim these things because they've never completed the studies in order to make that claim. Mm -hmm. And that's it, in a in a nutshell, that's what Hit Lab does right. is we do the testing for these digital solutions um, so that that so that when that product eventually gets out to the end users, that company can say with confidence, this product works, this product is helpful, this product is not going to harm you, this product is just as valid or maybe even better mm -hmm. than the the gold standard or the alternative that is out there currently. Right. Um, you know, like I said, there's a whole host of, oh, and on top of that, that um, users actually like it and yeah. want to use it. That's important too. Definitely. Wow. I mean, as a consumer, when you were kind of talking about how that's very, very much is a lot of gray area just within the market when it comes to all of these products, that just also made me think, oh man, I really need to continue to educate myself as a consumer when it comes to, you know, what has actually been validated. And I think just continues to show why studies like yours are so, so important. So definitely a good reminder for me too. <laughs> um, I love that. I also kind of wanted to ask you, since you, you know, you have the inside track on the Breakthrough Alliance Challenge mm -hmm. um, that Hit Lab does. Would love if you could share with us, you know, what the Breakthrough Alliance Challenge is and kind of how you got involved with it and how you kind of use that for your research, um, either as a pipeline or just the work that you do with it. Yes. Yeah, so um, twice a year, um, Hit Lab offers a Breakthrough Alliance Challenge challenge and we invite um, companies to uh, propose and submit their healthcare solution to hit lab and then they are chosen the, the three uh, three winners are chosen based upon a, a lot of different criteria and it's it's not just about um, what is um, I want to say the the best product or the best solution. There, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of consideration coming into um, is you know is this company um, on the right track financially or do they need assistance in particular areas or whatnot? But um, one of the benefits of winning um, this uh, breakthrough alliance challenge is we will conduct a short study for for the three winners and this is it's intended to be a quick validation study this is not a full-fledged clinical trial with you know with irb approval and multiple human subjects or whatnot that's that's the, those kinds of studies are much more complicated and take a lot of time and a lot of effort mm -hmm. but we'll do a short um, validation study. It could be a usability study. It mm -hmm. could be a functionality study. Um, it could be a uh, market research study, um, or it could be um, collecting uh, collecting data, specific information that the company needs in order to get to the next step in their development pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and we work with the companies in order to come up with the right question 
to right. ask at that time for that company and then come up with a um, a study uh, design in order to answer that question. Um, so, for instance, one of the BTA challenge winners that we are um, working with right now is working on a product to that would be a biomarker for ADHD medication, um, uh, whether or not like that the medication is working properly or is is helping mm -hmm. that patient. Um, so we are in the process of interviewing clinicians that prescribe ADHD medication and asking them about the process of prescribing for new patients as well as patients that might need adjustments in their medication so that the company can better understand how their product will fit in with the, I want to say, the, the normal life cycle of a patient that has ADHD and is seeking mm -hmm. treatment. Um, these are all, these are all really important. They, they're, they're important questions for the companies that are developing the products. Um, as a consumer, you might not think that they're important, but, um, you know, what we talked about or what I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the, the solution not only has to work, but it, it, it has to be likable and it has to fit in with that patient's um uh you know whether it be daily activities or their clinic or the clinician's clinical practice or whatnot because if if it can't get adopted then it doesn't matter how great the solution is so um there's a you know there's a lot of nuances to to getting a a new solution adopted into the you know into the user's space Definitely. um sometimes it could that information comes from the, you know, the end user or the patient. And some kind, sometimes that information can come from a clinician or um, uh, someone in the healthcare field. Right. Definitely. That's a very, wow, that's a very cool innovation. But I, I could totally see how, you know, wanting to understand how it fits in kind of the current, the current state of, of a healthcare and how things are prescribed is so important for the company. So it is very cool that, you know, you're, there's so many different ways that you can take a lot of this research kind of solving, like you were mentioning, that kind of one question that's needed. Um, kind of so curious, you had mentioned this a little bit earlier too about some of the other um, topics that that you've been spending a lot of time in, mm -hmm. um, but are there any like new projects or collaborations or just areas of opportunity that you see um, a lot of like traction in within women's health or just broader healthcare? I know you mentioned menopause, um, yeah, is there anything else that's kind of exciting for you or top of mind for you when it comes about the future? <laughs> well, there has been a kind of, you know, for better or for worse, the um, the Dobbs decision kind of created this flourish, this um, flurry of activity around women's um, reproductive cycle care. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of activity, a lot of action, both in refining solutions, but also bringing forward new solutions right. for addressing women, addressing women's reproductive um, care needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's one area that I that I've. I'm seeing a lot of traction, a lot of activity. And um, as I mentioned, um, menopause, perimenopause, premenopause, postmenopause, mm -hmm. um, just menopause treatment in general, there's a lot of activity going on around um, that. And then the the mental health care needs of women, which ah. um, beyond, um, you know, postpartum depression issues, there's a lot of very... Um, very unique or specific areas of mental health care that are unique to women that men just, yeah, don't experience. So those are some of the the three areas that personally that I, I see a lot of activity and a lot of traction happening. And there's, it's, it's so good. It's so good and rewarding and refreshing to see it. Wow. 
That's amazing. And I think the three that you out- outlined are are so pressing and, and very needed when it comes to to change, innovation, improvement. So I I, mm. I love that. And, and they've that- been they've been neglected. They've been neglected <laughs> for so long. And um yeah, they definitely need need more attention. One hundred percent. I'm so curious, kind of from a research perspective, for you know, like kind of what you had mentioned for reproductive health, you know, there was a lot of policy changes that kind of sparked that catalyst for things like menopause or mental health. Do you do you think it's like a timing thing? People are 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 ready to have these conversations? Is it a policy thing? Like, is there do you have any insight into kind of the why now of it all? Do you think it's just being more and more normalized? And now there is kind of this this awareness around it. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I do think yeah. that w- um, what has been happening in the, if you will, the the, the political landscape has uh, created this situation where more and more people are talking about these issues. And it's not like some, you know, quieted, closeted discussion. Um, people, you know, women are more and more women are saying, you know, no, I, I'm going to talk about this because this is important to me. If it's important to me and it's important to all women. So I'm going to stand up and I am going to talk about it and I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to demand solutions and I'm going to, um, you know, not be quiet about this. So there's definitely an element of that. And then I also think that it is also a little bit of the, if you will, the natural progression of the growth of digital healthcare solutions in general, because um, people will see a solution for a healthcare being developed over here, and then they'll say, hey, you know what, I bet this would also work over here for right. this issue that I don't see anybody addressing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's part of that natural progression and growth of digital healthcare solutions in general. I I think that's so beautiful. I really like that of how there's, I think, just so much opportunity that people are really seeing with, with digital health. And wow, I love that. Um, I do realize we're about like a minute out, which is great to me. I always have so much fun talking to you, Dr. Kat. There's so much great insights. Um, but as you know, one of my favorite questions to ask um, that I always like to say for last is, do you have any words of wisdom for us, um, either something that a mentor had said to you or just something that is, you know, all you when it comes to just like career and and uh, self-development that you wanted to share with us? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I, actually, I'm going to um, mention something uh, that I would say that has been advice that I've been giving to my daughter recently she's in she's in grad school and she's really just kind of starting out her own personal i want to say career path and i I said you know especially for women you got to knock down those doors you've got to um you know push the envelope and knock down those doors and whether it's um you know if uh, if these are in regards to a company that is developing something new and novel or a person that is, you know, trying to get somewhere that perhaps, you know, not a lot of women have been there before, which is the case with, with my daughter. Um, mm-hmm. Be the, it's okay to be the first one. It, it, it can be a little scary, but it's okay to be the first one. And, and, and it's okay to, to put yourself out there, knock on the door, open it, get, you know, get to where you need to be in order to, to be successful. I love that. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Kat, for such an enlightening conversation. Really, really appreciate it. Um, Also wanted to thank our sponsors. Make sure that you join us next week for our next Women's Health Tech Wednesdays. One last huge shout out to Dr. Kat Marriott for such an enlightening conversation. And we will see you all next week. Bye, everyone.